What are the top technical and fundamental indicators that I use for my investing and for my trades? That's what we will talk about in this video. So if you want to know more on what that is, check this video out. Hi everyone, this is Marvin Germo. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and smash that bell so you get updated every time we create new content about the stock market. I just have one goal in mind to teach you and give you the proper rudiments on how you can win and how you can use the stock market to help you reach your goals of financial freedom. So hey guys, uh, Merry Christmas. We're still here in South Korea. I'm in Namsan Tower overlooking uh, you can see Seoul at the backdrop and I wanted to answer another set of questions that have been sent out. No, A lot of you have been asking, uh, of course there's so many things that you can use in fundamental analysis and technical analysis but uh, people are asking what do I use specifically and please remember this, uh, what I use for both fundamentals and technicals also have changed throughout time. Uh, there were things that I was using when I was starting out more than a decade ago that I don't use anymore right now and there are things that I did not use before that I'm using now because it also evolves based on uh, your skill, based on your experience, based on your preference. Uh, so the context of what I'll share right now is these are the things that what I currently use for my investing and my trade. So it does not mean that it works for me, it will work for you. It does not mean also that if if there's something that I'm not using, you should you should also uh, use that because the thing the thing about this is the stock market is all about us having different contexts, us having different risk tolerances, and you have to find out what will work for you as well. And just for those who are relatively new to this channel as well, and those who have not attended our stock smart sessions, I use fundamental basically for my investing then I use technicals for my trading but for position trading I I, I kind of tweaked it that it's hybrid why I use fundamentals to help select my stocks and I use technicals to time it so that that's the variation that's the technique for it for quick trading though I don't use fundamentals anymore I just focus on uh, technical analysis because I would sell it uh, quickly so ganon. so what I'll do is I'll show you the things that I use for fundamentals then the things that I use for uh, for technicals and what I normally do is I I create a checklist for it meaning does this have a buy signal? 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 Then I look at the technicals. Does this have a buy sig signal? Does this have a buy signal? The one that has the most buy signals is what I normally buy, what I normally come into. So there. And if you notice it, and I've been saying this over and over, the reason why I keep using fundamentals and technicals is it helps remove emotion because it's emotions that will help you lose it. It's emotions that will uh, destroy your portfolio. It's emotions that will uh, make you lose money when you start uh, trading and investing. So let's start. For fundamentals, this is what I normally use. Uh, number one, I look at the general macroeconomy first. So you have to know specific economic indicators uh, in the country. You need to know uh, what causes the GDP to move up. You need to know what, what pushes spending for Filipinos. Then I also look at uh, in terms of the government spending. Where is the government pumping the money? Because the government is the biggest pumper and primer of any economy that's out there. So I look at where the government is spending. I look at the current composition of the GDP, which brings the most input or the most earnings for a particular country or our particular country, our particular economy. In the Philippines, as you all know, we're still uh, consumption driven. You, we, everything is predicated on BPOs. Everything is predicated also on remittances then you have POGOs entering the free, then you have construction, then you also have, uh, I hope tourism also becomes another leg for our economy as well. So, so you have all of those items. Then as I start to filter it out, I look at which companies fit the economy. The ones where the economy is not headed, it's where it's not headed there, I don't have to buy them anymore. Now, what, what's the next thing that I look at? I look at sales. I need to know if the sales are increasing. Very, very important. Then I look at also net income. Net income basically is how efficient a company is in going about its spending. So sales must be increasing. Net income also must be increasing. Then if you want to filter it also based on the shares that they, they have, I also look at the EPS. The EPS of the company should also be increasing. The EPS, by the way is proportional to the net income so if the EPS is increasing it's also you creating a peg that the net income is also increasing as well then aside from that uh, for me to have to know how how much excess income the company has that it could give back to its investors I'm looking at also the uh, 
consistency of the dividends. If the dividends is consistent throughout the years and the stock price is also increasing, that's amazing because as the stock price is increasing, the dividend that I'm getting is also it will also follow. It will also get better. And if you want to be conservative, you, know, you look for companies with uh, dividends that have been very, very consistent. If the dividends have been increasing every year, then that's even better. So find companies with dividends that are increasing. When you find companies whose dividends are increasing, you get to find something that will give you uh, it will be a, your cash cow. What does it mean? Because as the dividends is increasing, the stock price is also increasing. So parang, think about it like a condo. A condo that uh, the property prices is going up. But aside from the property prices going up, you're nagtataskarin ng rent every time. Next is I want to figure out also, hmm, how much leverage does a company have? How much debt does a company have? The, the, I look at the debt to equity ratio. So if the company is not too leveraged, naman, then it's better for me. You want a company who has, kung may debt sila, it has to be uh, not not they're not hyper extended and you want them if they have that their income must be increasing massively because that means if they borrowed money and then they're not actually increasing they're not growing that means the projects that they created for that particular borrowing did not actually help them so then I look at liquidity ratios I look at current ratios quick ratios I want to know if they can settle their debts meaning if things go bad for the company do they have enough cash to be able to settle liabilities on a regular basis then after that I look at if the company's cheap that's where PE ratio and PB ratios factor in. I want. To, I don't want to buy a company that's uh, that's good and growing, but very, 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 very expensive. Though, so that's where PE and PB ratios will uh, come into play. So, so there. So those are the things basically that I would look at for tech, for fundamental analysis. Uh, what I, I need to see growth in the sales, in the income, in the dividends. Uh, very, very important to me. I want companies that give consistent dividends. So at least I also have cash flow. I want them to be liquid. That's why I look at the current ratio and the quick ratio. I also want them to have a very, very low level of debt or even if they have that, it's very, very manageable that they can still pay it off as well. So that's for fundamentals. Then for technicals, uh, basically it's this. If you've been following my videos, uh, you would normally see this, that I would normally use support and resistance. So I would plot the candlestick chart. Please remember, it can be either line chart or bar chart, but I normally use the candlestick chart for the very reason that uh, it's easier to see. It's very visual. If there's a lower, if there's a large movement upward, I will see a large green candle there. If there's a lot of selling, I will see that there's a large red candle there. Then I overlay it also with volume. Volume will get will show me if there's a lot of people positioning uh, in the stock as well. Volume tells me if new stock are people really getting out, or is this something that will not be not be long live, or if it breaks out, I want to see if large breakout large price movement is there a really really large amount of volume also coming in for the stock as well so so i look at the candlesticks then i segment them also with price uh, with volume then after that this is what i this is what i normally do as well after segmenting the volume i also draw my own support and resistance i draw uh I draw my support. My main buy signal there is if it bounces off certain support levels, then I set my target price at the resistance. Consistent. It has to be like that. Every time it bounces, I buy. Every time it hits the resistance and fails to break out, I would sell. That's the that's the first thing that I look at. Then second is this. You have to remember, when you draw your support and resistance, you will find out specific areas where there will be resistances. But there will come points in time also there where that resistance will be broken out from. When a stock breaks out from a resistance, that becomes another buy signal. So uh, to add to the mix, bounce from support, uh, buy from the breakout. That's basically it. So I draw my own. Then for precision trading, what I normally do also is I, I know how to uh, create trend lines. So one of the best ways for you to find buy signals there is when you find a stock that's in a downtrend, it breaks out from the downtrend and it breaks out from the resistance that you've picked. The stock that, that becomes a reversal signal for me and I start buying and I start accumulating at that point in time. So that's my technique, that's my goal, that's my narrative. I start I start buying in those areas, I start buying when, when it starts to reverse. So as a position trader, my whole goal is to find reversals from downtrend. After finding reversals from downtrends, I maximize the uptrend. I do not sell when the uptrend is over. When the, until the uptrend is over, the whole goal, the whole narrative of technical analysis is until you find a sell signal, you don't do anything. Until you find a sell signal, you're not supposed to actually sell. It's basically just the discipline of not doing anything until your signals emerge that you're supposed to take action. And a lot of people miss out on green moves because they sell too quick. So, candlesticks, I add volume, support and resistance, trend lines, bounce from support, breakout from resistance. Then, here's the thing. 
if I just want to get confirmation, I want to have another layer of analysis to show me that the, the breakout is legit or the bounce is also legit, I add moving averages. People are asking, what moving average do I normally use? I use SMAs. I use 20, 50, 100, 200. If I want to trade shorter perspectives, I use 10, 20, 50. If I want to trade longer perspectives, I use 50, 100, 200. But the principles for buying and selling, those moving averages never change. You just have to find what fits, fits you. Are you trading shorter durations or are you trading longer durations? but the buy signals will never change then I also use MACD for quick trading the cross up and the cross down that's what I use for MACD then for uh, for for position trading cross up above zero is a buy signal for me cross down below zero is a sell signal for me for MACD if I want to use I want to add momentum to the mix I use ADX ADX is my determination whether there's a larger amount of momentum causing stocks to move higher then what else uh, to to also substantiate volume and to also get a layer of confirmation for volume i use ado and i also use the check-in money flow oscillator to show me also if money is coming in or coming out to give me somehow a good context of if this breakout is something that's legit or is this something that will uh not follow through over the next over the next few days then if i want if i want shortcuts also uh, uh that give an example when market drops i use rsi uh when market drops i use rsi because it shows me that if a stock is oversold and it has dropped massively, it becomes an, it gives me an area, it gives me a context to come in uh, when it's oversold. But as long as it has to, number one, be at the support level, it has to drop massively, hit the support level, and RSI needs to cross up. Then another another special indicator that I use is the parabolic star. I use it for breakouts. It tells me to sell quickly before it starts to go sideways. And lastly, if I want shortcuts, uh, I use also Bollinger Bands as a substitute for moving averages and trend lines as well. So that's how it's normally segmented. I have particular checklists for fundamentals and I have particular lists also for technicals as well. I'll try to create a more detailed uh, detailed list on this but most of these are in our Stocksmart sessions. For those who attended our Stocksmart sessions, you know uh, the context of why I'm, I'm doing this and you know the context of how I draw uh, those stocks as well. I forgot to mention this. If I want a substitute uh, as compared to me drawing my own support and resistance, I just use uh, Fibonacci retracements because Fibonacci retracements give me a substitute as well uh, as to where the drawing of the buying and selling areas of support and resistances are. So those are the things that I basically use. Some I use more than others, but those are the iterations of how I combine my buy and sell signals for both technicals and fundamentals. And if you notice it, none of them, none of my buy parameters are, is hope. None of my buy parameters is uh, I buy based on, uh, I don't know, just uh, guessing. Everything is just based on what the charts are telling me or everything is just based on what uh, the fundamental indicators are telling me as well. So I hope you guys learned a lot from all of this. I hope this is something that has given you uh, so much information, so much data so that you get to trade the markets with confidence because at the end of the day, uh, that's all I want. That's the main context of all of this. This video, this channel is here so that you guys get to win. You guys get to analyze based on what the numbers are telling you so that you don't have to speculate, you don't have to guess, and you get to win as well. I hope that also as you are... Uh, on a break, you get to use uh, the data that I'm telling you to research all of them. Uh, use your free time. What you do on your free time will determine your future. What you do on your free time will also determine how big will you be later on. Don't just spend everything just entertaining yourself. Use your time also to help yourself grow. Use your time also to make you get better in terms of your trading and investing as well. Because again, that's all I wanted. That's the whole context of why we do videos like this. We want you guys to win and we want you to invest massively. I want you guys to use your savings and investments and plant them and sow them so you get to reach your goals of financial freedom if there's any clarifications that you have from this video just comment them below comment i want to know more comment a specific indicator that you have any uh that you need clarity on i'll try to make videos about that or uh, the easiest way for you i guess is just to attend our sessions because i don't have any specific videos yet uh from all of those indicators but most of them are in the stock smart sessions as well so uh I guess that's it for now. I hope that uh, this is something that's helping you and you are one step closer from your dream of being financially free. So this is Marvin Germo from Seoul in South Korea. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon guys and God bless you all.